from the gardening sisters and in today's video i am going to be filling in one of my new raised bed gardens that i have i'm also going to be trans um transplanting the bok choy my swish and swish chard and my spinach into this bed as well and i don't know right now if i'm going to plant anything but i am going to go ahead and show you all that i'm also going to be transplanting some um tomato seedlings that I started so I'm basically going to be up potting them and I may have a couple of other things that I have to up pot as well because they are kind of getting a little bit too big in those trays that I started and the seed, the um, tomatoes are getting a little bit leggy so before they get too far I'm just going to go ahead and up pot them and kind of bury the stem a little bit so I'm going to go ahead and turn around and show you guys what I'm going to be using to fill the bed and I'm also going to show you guys the bed as well. All right, so if you saw my previous video, I've already showed you guys this one, but I only filled in my two galvanized ones. I wanted to come back and show everything that actually was included. So this is the bed itself. And then it comes with these labels. I've already um, labeled what I'm gonna be putting in there today. I mentioned that it also came with two more of these blocks right here. So I'm showing you guys that these are the other two blocks. And then it also comes with, it came with quite a few of these um, grow bags. I'm going to use these grow bags for something else. So I went ahead and covered the bottom portion of my bed with cardboard because I don't want the soil to sit directly on the um directly on the wood so because i'm not going to be using these so just aesthetic wise i didn't like how the grow bags looked um in some of the other pictures i saw i prefer to just fill mine with soil so that's what we're going to do and then here is the organics all natural raised bed and potting soil that i'm going to be using to actually fill my bed so we're just going to go ahead and start working on that now so just to show you, I had used this soil um, in my front flower bed, but I usually use just the garden soil. Garden soil. And so this is a brand that's pretty good. Um, you guys saw in my previous video that I actually made my own soil because for my race galvanized beds, I wanted to make sure that their soil didn't, wasn't gonna be full of sticks, which is what I find sometimes happens whenever I purchase some of the other soils. So I made that one myself. But for the purpose of filling this bed, I'm okay with using a pre-made um, potting mix. And I'm just gonna periodically use my fork here to knock loose any larger, um, any larger pieces of wood. I mean, any larger pieces of soil. So I'll fill this one hole with you guys on camera and then the rest I'm just going to go ahead and do off camera. Okay, so I'm going to go in with some of my perlite. It took the entire bag and I also had to go and get some of my old soil that I, um, am repurposing because this one it was basically these three needed to be filled in more um that that bag was not enough so i want to go in and add some of my perlite to help with more of the drainage because that soil was a little bit more compact i'm just gonna kind of work that in to each section because my main thing with these with soil is making sure that it will drain properly and that the soil is not so compact that the roots are unable to move <clears throat> and this feels this soil feels really well so if I notice any big pieces of um, bark or anything like that I'll just go in and move that out as I'm mixing in the perlite. So I just added more soil that I had in a different pot and I'm going in with more of that perlite. And 
I do think I want to add a couple of spoons of my cocoa core brick just for moisture retention. So I may go ahead and add that. I'm just adding that in for again moisture retention because the perlite is for drainage. This is for moisture retention. And then I'm going to add something else here in just a second because I'm learning not to just depend on the soil itself that I buy. Still kind of go in with my own amendments because I didn't notice too much peat moss in it. So I definitely want to make sure that this is not going to have a problem with holding moisture in the soil whenever I go and water these. Now the last thing that I'm going to add to this bed, because it already, it, this some of this soil is new, but some of it is old oil, um, soil mixed in, I am going to add just a little bit of my premium kelp meal just to add in um, a bit of nutrient for any of that soil that, um, any of that newer soil. I'm just going to sprinkle it across the top, not too much in each, just enough. And I'm just gonna lightly rake it into the top layer so it will be readily accessible to our transplants. Here is the bok choy that you guys have been seeing. You recently saw me up pot these. Um, the roots have started to develop at the bottom. So I'm just gonna go in. I have about six bok choy plants. So I'm gonna go ahead and get them set out. About six of these. These are some holes. It'd probably be easier if I just went ahead and cut these because I'm not gonna reuse these just to keep down on any like fungus transfer or anything like that in my soil. So I think I'm gonna cut these to make these come out a little bit easier. And so technically I know I could reuse these if I just washed them and cleaned them, but we drink so much water here that getting these cups, getting these um, bottles will not be a real issue for us because we we go through so much water in a day that I can easily get these to replace. So now hopefully I can get this out here or out of here a little bit easier without damaging that root system because I've already up potted these once. I don't want to risk damaging the root system again. You can see here and that's a nice looking plant so i'm just gonna go ahead and transfer it over into its final growing spot and this is what the roots were looking like at the bottom and we're just gonna get it down in there nice and snug being careful not to cover those bottom leaves. Pressing down any of those air pockets. And that is our first choy in the soil. So essentially I'm just gonna do this for the rest of them. And then we'll also be doing this with our spinach but making sure that when i cut this that i'm being very careful looking as well because i don't want to cut any of those roots
and you can see this one had this one had a really really nice root system going so if you don't have any pots at home or anything like that and you need to upsize or even if you need to start um seeds off water bottles are a really good economical way to start you don't have to have anything fancy on hand just make sure you poke a hole in the bottom and we just did one drainage hole and they did fine so that's all we did and now we're just pressing those in and that's gonna be it so I'm just gonna go ahead and do the rest of these off camera and then I will come back when we get ready to work on our spinach in Swiss chard. All right, so I've already started working on the spinach because I'm doing the spinach and the Swiss chard because I'm doing the exact same thing. So um, I went ahead and got started on that. And now we're just going in, placing them in the soil. So I went in and I grabbed my seed book and um, I did purchase this off of Amazon because my seeds had gotten out of control and I needed something to cover them up. So I'm going to go ahead and start some radishes and then I think I may do one of these with some green onion and look through here and see what else I have. So that's what I'm planning to do now. I would just use some of the leftover space here for some of my radishes. Since these, um, the ones that I'm growing, these aren't gonna grow out wide. They're gonna kind of grow down um, um, almost in the, the way of carrot wood. So my empty spaces that are all throughout here, I'm just gonna add a few radish seeds and just kind of see what happens. Just to kind of play around with spacing within this bed to kind of see what I can kind of get away with. And then I'll go get um, another variety, another two varieties or maybe three, maybe my Scarlet Globe, my purple, um, purple plum Finished adding all of my radishes but I am going to make me a little plot of green onion and I'm kind of scooping this all to the side so I can use that to go over it and I'm just gonna start some of those and I'm just gonna sprinkle those in because these don't have to have that much space since we're only, they're bunching green onion. And then I'll just go back in and lightly cover these. I'm just adding some more of that cocoa core just to get it covered up a little bit better. So I am going to label these so that way I can remember what I put here. I think in one of these front two, I'm going to try to transplant my little lettuce here and see what happens with those. I'm actually going to save this back one here for an experiment. I'm going to try this. Um, it's kind of like a broccolini, a small miniature broccoli, but this is a sweet bunch. I'm just going to stick one right here in the middle. These, um, like the the length of this looks pretty long, so I'm just going to try it. Um, 
because it just it doesn't hurt to try it if it doesn't work then i know not to do it again but seeing that people are growing these in pots i just want to see how far i can push this bed so yeah that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna add some lettuce here i'm gonna kind of bury this down because i want to kind of cover up some of the stem or bury it a little bit so it can produce a, a more vigorous plant. All right, so that sweet bunch broccoli is now placed in its own section. I wanna dedicate this one to basil. I love using basil and I figured this would be a nice spot to try to get some going. So, that is what I'm going to use this section for. I'm just kind of sprinkling them across kind of how I did with the on the green onion seeds. Lightly cover them and hope for some good germination. And just like the onion, gonna cover this up with some core as well to finish lightly covering those seeds. I'll go stick my labels in and that'll be it for our new raised bed garden. gonna go in with this diatomaceous earth just to be on the safe side and I could probably put on gloves but <laughs> yeah, probably not and this is just to keep stuff from nibbling that will probably be it for this so i'm gonna go ahead and take y'all over to my dahlia bed where i sold those onion with you all a few months ago from now since now and um i'm gonna actually harvest the tops for green onion so y'all can see those there i'm gonna harvest those and i may leave a little just to see if some of the green onion will come back um i planted these out of season so i don't know if these are ever going to actually bulb i am starting with new onion so i'm just going to take some of the tops off So here is the green onion that we harvest today. Um, I know you may be wondering why I didn't leave any to kind of like cut as we need. This is how we buy it in the store. You know, just kind of buy it as a bunch and we fly through green onions. So honestly, leaving any of this behind would have just been um, 
wasteful because I would have had to keep coming out just about every day getting this anyways and stick this in the fridge and this will probably be gone within the next week and a half. So I'm just gonna fertilize these really quickly because today is actually my day that I'm supposed to fertilize. And I just go in with this fish emulsion and I'm especially gonna fertilize since I just went in and um, harvested some of these. And another thing I wanted to say, um, I'll eventually pull these out because I have to fertilize these with this fish emulsion, which mostly consists of nitrogen. And I have dahlias in this bed. So you're really not even supposed to fertilize those um, during the winter time, but especially once they start to come up. I do usually start those off with nitrogen, but then you wanna switch to something with less nitrogen. And I don't wanna keep putting that into this bed. So, um these will probably be coming up very soon so i just want to show you guys some of these seedlings two of these are my watermelon and these are my coleus plants over here i'm going to go ahead and up pot these um watermelon they're going to go in pots that look like this so this is my nasturtium i didn't do these on camera but um i did want to show y'all that i am going to be up potting these i'll probably come and put in a clip at the end of the video showing you this. I'm gonna be up potting some tomatoes and peppers as well. So um, that's pretty much going to be it. I really just kind of wanted to show you guys that new bed and kind of me feeling it. So um, that is going to be it. So since I had already done the up potting video, um, it's pretty much the same. I'll just be putting it in those cups instead of those water bottles this time. And here's a nice pepper that's ready to be up potted. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Like I said, insert a clip and then we'll be done with that video, with this video. So that will conclude today's video. Um, you guys saw the new raised bed. I transplanted over some things, planted some new stuff. I also up potted some of those tomatoes, pepper plants, and we also harvested some of the onions. So that is gonna be it. I hope that you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, please do give us a big thumbs up. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And also feel free to turn on the notification bell so that you'll know every time we post new content. And until next time, I will see you all in the next video.